Welcome to the Reschooled Podcast, the show that discusses all the things that schools may have missed with your hosts, AJ Kuti and Jason Gordon. We're back. We're uh, we're sitting here with a special guest we're excited to uh, introduce you to. But before, before we get to that, we are Reschooled Podcast, the show that discusses all the things that schools may have prepared you for. As always, I'm AJ sitting across from me, one of the people sitting across from me. Jason, Jason, how you doing? Doing great, AJ. I'm excited about this one. This is our first guest. No kidding. This is this is a, a special time for, for our special guest. So let me introduce our special guest. She's a great friend of mine. She's a member of the Kappa Delta sorority, so we wanted to get a pro in here to talk about Greek life for you. Emily Ward. Emily, how are you doing? I'm doing pretty good. I like One quick comment, though. Can I have an introduction made for my life so I can just play it like you guys just had? That was awesome. I was not ready for that. We try. We, we have to get pumped up before the uh, the episode. You can put it on your phone as a ringtone. So when you walk <laughs> in the room, you just automatically play it. <laughs> I love this idea. Dude, do you know how bad that would be if a student did that? Like all I can think of now is a student just walking in and playing that right as they walk in the room. I'd have to give them extra credit for that. <laughs> I have to think some of my students are because they come in wearing either oh, beats yeah, or buds, about. you know, so I don't know what they're listening to. <laughs> well, last episode, we talked about studying abroad. And the things that you can do with studying abroad, why they're, you know, they could be potentially good for you, things that you have to watch out for and how to pay for them. This episode, we're going to be talking about Greek life. So in layman's terms, the fraternities, the sororities of your college, getting into them, why you would want to get into them, some of the things that you may need to be aware of before you get into them and how to choose them. And so, like I said before, Jason, neither Jason and I have been in one. We didn't join one. So we felt it would be best for the listeners if we brought in an expert. So thus, Emily, thank you for joining us again. Anytime. So does that sound good to y'all? Y'all want to talk about some Greek life? Let's sure. But before we do, AJ, let me remind everybody, visit our website, reschool.com. That's reschool with a D, not an E-D. All our social media handles, we are Reschool Pod, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn. Also, we're on YouTube now. So look us up there, a whole different platform that we're, that we're offering information. And then, of course, on your favorite podcast apps, Spotify, Google, Apple, and once again, contact us. Let us know the things that you want you want us to talk about. Okay, use the contact app on our website. Anything else, AJ? Don't forget YouTube. Again, those are the specialty videos. We uh, we pretty much answer a question, not really go over a topic. So they're about three to five minutes long. So uh, be on the lookout for that. Make sure you uh, like and hit the or subscribe and hit the the bell button that lets you get notifications on when we have new videos come around. So uh, that'll be helpful. Well, Emily, we're going to start with you today. So if you don't know much about the show, hopefully you do. But if you don't, we always start with a quick question, some kind of personal question to each other, which this is not going to be, I guess it'll be all of us because I'm going to add a little bit to it. But the question is, why did you choose to be in or join a fraternity sorority, in your case, a sorority? And then Jason and I will answer the question, why we chose not to. (laughs) You are the, right now you are sitting here, the spokesperson for the KD sorority why did you choose Katie? Why did you choose to go the Greek life route? Yeah, so I went to a completely different school than a lot of the other kids from my hometown. They were all going to go to UGA, and I decided I, mean, I was going to go to... a better school? Okay, uh, real tight. But uh, to go to Georgia oh, College... Oh, good Lord. Um, <laughs> where I was like the first person from my hometown to like really go there. Um, so I wasn't going to know anybody. And I've always grown up in like a small pond where we knew pretty much anyone we ever grew up with. Um, and so I was just trying to figure out ways to get plugged in. Also, I love community service. And so um, I was like, you know what, let me let me try this Greek life thing. Like, let me go through recruitment and see if I like it. Um, my mom did Greek life back at Troy University. And she was like, met some of my best friends there. So go through the week long recruitment process. If you love it, rush a sorority. If it's not for you, because it's not for everybody, um, then dip. And that's it. So um, she didn't put a whole lot of pressure on me, but she did encourage me to jump in there. So, Jason, I have a feeling that she's going to sound more hip than we are. You well, know, naturally she, she is. <laughs> yeah, she's much younger than us. <laughs> All right, Jason, why did you choose not to join a fraternity? Well, I was first generation coming to college and... What I knew about a fraternity, I learned from Animal House. You know, yeah, buddy, <laughs> J- John Belushi. You know, I learned a lot from that. And you but still didn't join. <laughs> as much as anything, I learned that it cost additional money, That's and true. that was a scarce resource at the time. And given my fear of failure, I uh, I said no. If I'm gonna I'm gonna concentrate on school, and and honestly, at my college, Greek life wasn't huge. It was a 
food and beverage city, right? So uh, it's just, I don't know, there was less of a Greek life presence there for guys and girls. So it was an easy choice for me. Too expensive and not really that many people were doing it. Yeah, for me, and, and maybe it's a myth. I don't know if it's a myth, if it's true or not, but I always felt like joining a fraternity at my university is, or for any university for that matter, for any student, is a way to connect with other students that you would otherwise may not have connected with or may have trouble connecting with. So for me, I've never had a problem connecting with people, making friends. I'm not somebody that's very shy. And I went to school in my hometown, so I knew a lot of people. So I didn't really feel like there was a need for me to join a fraternity because I was already friends with most of them. And I know there's some other value that comes from those, but that was just kind of in my head what I was thinking. And like I said before, I didn't want to say that one set of friends was better than the other set of friends because I've had friends in all fraternities at my, my college. So I didn't want to go through that, but I did rush and it was, a, it was a very interesting, uh, process. And like I said before, I, the bid day, which is the day that you get your bids, they do all the food and they do really nice food. And that's what I was going for. <laughs> and so the steak and the, the shrimp and the lobsters, that was really nice. But yeah, that was my, that was the reason why I didn't. Uh, it, do you feel like that's a myth, Emily, that it's, it's for people who struggle making friends on college, on college campuses? Um, I mean, yeah, I, but I mean, uh, at the same time, I mean, I rushed it because I didn't know anybody going into it, but like I could talk to a brick wall all day, you know what I mean? So it's kind of like getting a jump start on making those friends and connections and can make going into college a little less like nerve wracking. Um, so it's like 50, 50. Well, let's get to our main topic. Uh, and so this is just, we're really going to talk about that topic about Greek life in itself on a general sense. And so I will, most of these questions are going to be directed at you and we'll probably have some follow-up questions here and there. But first things first, let's talk about in general fraternities and sororities. Are all fraternities and sororities the same? No, everybody, everybody's like different sorority and fraternity name wise and chapters are all completely different. They all stand for completely different things. They all support different philanthropies, but also um, looking at it from a school perspective. So like, the KDs at Georgia are completely different than the KDs at, you know, GCSU and different from the ones at, you know, Valdosta State or anything like that. Like, it, they're all completely different. How so? Um, help me understand. I mean, having never done it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, basically, like, the certain types of personalities that will all kind of flock together, like birds of a feather flock together. So um, you'll have, you know... The ones at Georgia College were very, I don't, they were all very kind. They were very, like, nice. They cared about school. They, um, you know, were really big in philanthropy and were a little bit more uh, down-to-earth gals. Um, and I've seen, you know, other sororities at other schools be a little bit probably more, say, like, stereotypical or, like, the complete opposite where, you know, they are, like, super sporty. Like, they own sports. And I don't really know why it's like that, but I've just, I've seen it. So. so, Emily, how does that play out on the national level then? So if being a KD, you belong to the national organization, right? Mm -hmm. So if it has different personalities, what personality, do you see personality trickling down from the top? That is, you know, the perception of what is a KD comes into local uh, chapters at any given school, or does the personalities kind of blend like going up the chain? Um, you know, in terms of national, like we didn't really talk to them that much. We didn't really see them a whole lot. They'd send like one person from national down for one week out of the year for recruitment specifically. Uh, how we decided, you know, what kind of girls we were looking for was basically like a, um, I don't want to say like a, a scorecard because that's not fair like different qualities in a person like where you know did they do they care about school do they care about like growing as a person do they care about getting into leadership opportunities do they care about you know helping out in the community and so those were the kind of people which you know aj and i are like obviously not the exact same i have hair and he doesn't but it's like Thank we you. could agree <laughs> you're welcome um but we could agree that like we're really big on helping out in the community we're always willing to step up and you know take leadership opportunities if it's going to help other people out it's like you don't have to look the exact same or have the exact same like mentality to fit the quality and trait that we were going for so 
Um, it wasn't like a copy paste situation where you walked up to our sorority house and it was a bunch of people with the exact same hair color and like a screeching pitch, you know? Yeah. If you haven't heard or if you haven't figured it out yet, Emily and I are like brother and sister. We always joke on each other and have fun with that. So, Sorry. and she knows that I don't have any hair. So, um, <laughs> yeah. So going back to you, the uh, question that Jason asked, I do know from a fraternity standpoint, uh, kind of what Emily was saying is that I know there was chapters where I was growing up where the chapter on campus was considered or thought of as the nerdy chapter on campus because they had the highest GPA. They were, they were, they really cared a lot about their, their schoolwork. And then you go to the same chapter, but on another campus like tech or UGA or anywhere across the country. And they all of a sudden become the partiers or the meatheads or the, you know, the stereotypes. And so it's completely different. I do know that, that I, I did see that across the board. My, one of my reservations kind of going back to why I didn't join was I didn't want to be associated with something that had that possibility of the negative side coming out and affecting me. So like, you know, if some, if one chapter did something wrong at another college, I didn't have anything to do with it, but I didn't want that name recognition associated with me too, to say, I'm this, I'm part of this membership and it's been on the news for doing something stupid. So That's fair. Emily, this one's specific to you. Cause again, we can't answer this one. What was the experience like for you when you were going through the process of joining your sorority? It was like nothing anybody could have ever prepared me for outside of my mother. And I'm still very surprised that she could just tell me straight up what was going to happen. Um, she's from a very small town. So I just, you know, didn't know that she was all up in Greek life, but, um, it's insane. You are going in and getting interviewed and grilled from like seven different sororities in one day. And at the same time, you have to remember you know, you need to interview those sororities too and make sure it's a good fit for you as well. Like I've seen girls go in and they're, it sounds mean and I don't mean it to sound mean, but like they were really desperate to get into a sorority because they thought it was cool. And so they would go, you know, pretty much pretend to be the person that they thought the sorority wanted to see, not necessarily mine, just across the board and would get in there and then they'd hate it because it wasn't, it didn't fit them, you know, and you can't, you can only pretend to be something you're not for so long. So my biggest uh, piece of advice to the girls who were going through recruitment when I was talking to them when I was on the other side of it um, was, you know, just be yourself and for real, like ask us the questions, like lead the interview, because at the end of the day, you want to make sure that we're right up your alley or else you're going to be miserable and probably drop out. So nobody wants that. So you just said that the process being very interview like, from my experience going through Rush, because I did go through Rush, it seems like the fraternities and the sororities are very different because yeah. it seems like the sororities are very, like you said, the interview process and the fraternities are like, all right, we're going to have a party and we're going to get to know you through, you know, just sitting there talking to you, but not in an, a, a formal interview almost. Is that a, is that a true statement? Yeah. From what wow. I've heard on the frat side. Yeah. Okay. It's very so, social. Can I ask a question of you, Emily, real quick? How do you know going in? what the sorority or fraternity, if you know that answer, how do you know what they stand for? How do you know their personalities and things like that if you don't have someone who can just flat out tell you this is kind of what they're about? So I went in blind. Um, this was, I think Instagram came out like right when I was getting into college. So, you know, there wasn't a huge presence. People couldn't post videos and you could learn more about a brand now versus when I went in. So it was really a matter of like, I went to their website and I stalked them. I read up on like what they cared about, what they stood for, that kind of thing. But at the same time, when I went in, I knew, all right, this is what's important to me. So I'm going to get a get a BS reader on these people and see like, are they like just jerking me around or do they actually like care about, you know, helping people out and actually care about getting good grades, you know? So um, I think today's time it's probably a lot easier to figure out what somebody's about because you can just go on instagram or tiktok to the different chapters because every chapter has you know social platform and you can see what they're posting um you know what they're you know doing philanthropy for etc and see okay is it really engaged is it not like is it just a bunch of pictures of them like going crazy that kind of thing well so once you get into the process and you've gone through the process and you get your, I assume Sorotis call them bids as well, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. So once you get your bid and you decide that and you actually join your sorority or fraternity, 
What are some of the hidden benefits of being part of a fraternity or sorority? Um, something that I don't think people really think about initially, but you start thinking about it uh, like junior, senior year of college is the fact that like these are national brands that are all over, you know, they're all over the country. Like members are everywhere. They're in all sorts of companies. So, you know, you have a network of people that if I wanted to go to PR and work in an agency, I could easily submit my resume, probably get an interview. Um, if you know, another KD works there, you know, probably. Um, or I can connect with somebody on LinkedIn who, you know, works at a PR firm and is a KD. And I can be like, hey, like, I am thinking about getting into this. Like, could we talk? And most of the time, like, yeah, they'll stop down. So it's really the alumni chapter that can be one of those hidden benefits that people don't necessarily realize right off the bat. One of the things that you told me a while back and, and a few episodes ago, if you've listened to those listeners, that we talked about how to get the most out of college, non-academically speaking. And I said, I had two friends that gave me some advice as to what you can get out of a fraternity and what you can get out of a sorority. Emily was the one that I was talking about, about the sorority side. And one of the things you brought up was the leadership ability. Mm -hmm. Can you, can you ex expand on that a little bit to, for our listeners? Yeah. So basically being in a sorority is like being in your own um, like little city, you know, internally, because you have a council of people who help lead the chapter. Um, we have a social chair that'll plan like all the social events. You have a PR chair that literally if any news breaks or if we're doing something community related, they make sure it goes out and people know what we're doing. Um, and they report back to national, let national know like, hey, we're out in the community like doing X, Y, and Z. We've raised raise this much money. Um, we have somebody that's recruitment chair uh, that's in charge of making sure that, you know, we're having girls actively want to be members. Um, a couple of other different positions like that. And then obviously the president who's like the supreme overlord of everyone. So the great thing about it is that you can get in and figure out, okay, I think it'd be really fun. I'm, I'm going to school for a graphic design degree. Like we have a t-shirt chair position that I could apply for where they make like the t-shirt graphics for all the events that we do throughout the year. So Your single job is just to make the t-shirt design. Yeah, literally. That's literally. awesome. Yeah. Heck yeah, it is. Um, and you don't get paid. Like it's not like a little underground, like mafia or anything like that. Like it's all volunteer. But the thing is like, it's the experience. And you know, if you were a graphic designer, you're getting the experience doing work like that. And you also can build your portfolio or, and, you know, expand on your creations and it just all goes into each other. So I was, um, vice president of standards, which is like literally the stick in the mud, um, because they're the make, they're the person that makes sure like nobody dies. Um, and sometimes people That's hate that. Yeah. <laughs> it's a really important job is sometimes people are like, what do you mean? I need to stop drinking like that kind of stuff. So, um, it was a hard job, but I mean, I had girls coming up to me like a year, year and a half after I was like done with my term and were like, thank you for being there for me when I needed somebody to talk to and give me advice and like give me a resource and blah, 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 blah. So it's just nice to get that leadership opportunity and be able to make an impact with people like that and get that experience and be able to go into the real world when you're interviewing and speak to how you help run a chapter of like 250 girls you know, that are across X, Y, and Z ages and was able to coordinate efficiently, like communicate, you know, blah, blah, blah. So just really hype yourself up, you know? So, so Emily, mm -hmm. on that same vein, what's the best case scenario, worst case scenario, what's the time breakdown you're talking about? Like, you know, people, I think who are listening to this episode, they may be coming into college or early in college. They, they have a lot on their plate already, right? Mm -hmm. They're, they're listening to this because there's a lot of things about college they don't know already. This is just one other thing. So if they were going to get involved, if they were going to be minimally involved versus all the way up to wanting to be president of the sorority, mm -hmm. what kind of time commitment, what kind of effort is required? I mean, the more involved you are, the more time it's going to be, obviously. Like, I mean, I lived in the sorority house, so I feel like I had, I mean, and I loved every second. It was what I wanted to do, you know, so it wasn't it didn't feel like a huge time commitment, but it was like my entire life was a sorority for like a year. Um, but it was the best time. And, you know, it comes with school and you're all good and time management. But uh, on the low end, I mean, realistically, you go to chapter once a week and it's an hour long. Um, you know, outside of that, we'll have events throughout the semester and you're required to attend 
like a couple of those events, but you know, good and far in advance of time when it's going to happen. You can plan around it, um, pick which ones you want to go to, that kind of thing. So it wasn't, you know, you have to be at everything always because that's just, that would be miserable. And we're not trying to make everyone's life miserable. So, well, those sound like good benefits. Let's talk about the other side of it. Mm-hmm. What are some hidden issues or pitfalls when it comes to being a part of a fraternity or sorority? You got to be careful because I did not experience this. I'll be the first one to say I have not experienced this personally. Um, the chapter, the Katie chapter at my school was awesome sauce, but I know there were other chapters at the school who got busted bad for hazing so terribly, you know, like it, it was bad. And so that's definitely something that's hidden. Um, my biggest piece of advice, again, is like, if people are going to try to force you to do something and you don't want to do it, like dip, you do not have to do it. Nobody is like telling you they're going to go like steal all of your stuff if you don't do it, you know, so don't cave into the peer pressure. Um, cause I, I would say that was probably the biggest one. I mean, cause it was really sad to see that happen. Maybe this is a hidden, hidden pitfall, but it, we all know it's a pitfall. What is the financial implications of fraternity sororities? Yeah, so it differs by chapter and like that would definitely be a pitfall. But I will also say the sorority life has done a really good job of figuring out payment plans and also offering, you know, scholarships to some who may not be able to afford it, but they still obviously like want to do it. Um, So they have options, but like it it can be expensive because I mean, it's a certain investment every semester on top of if you want to go to formal, like that's that's extra money. If you want the t-shirts, like that's extra money. But again, nobody's forcing you to buy the t-shirts and nobody's like forcing you to go to formal, but like everybody wants to go to formal. Like everybody wants to get dressed up. And yeah. Go. I've seen the pictures. I wanted to even go to formal. Yeah, exactly. So, um, but they have done a really good job of making payment plans, um, for the girls. Cause I know a lot of girls that I went to school with who were working like two jobs and school and they were tutoring and, but you know what? They wanted to be a part of the sorority because they loved it more than anything. And so they worked those two jobs and were on a payment plan. That's interesting. I didn't know that. I, I just, I always uh, assumed that it was going to be just a, a huge financial burden, but knowing that they do work with you in some capacity for those who really need the help and still want to be a part of it. That's really kind of cool to hear because that's something you don't hear a lot about. Mm-hmm. Emily, did you ever run any, into any negative perceptions of you or any of your um, uh, sorority sisters by virtue of just being in the sorority? Absolutely. <laughs> um, people thought I was dumb, like intelligent wise. Like They um, thought that I there was just nothing going on in my brain and that I was just like a, a woo girl. Um, and I, at the time I was going for biology degree, so that was super insulting, but, um, you just got to kind of shrug it off. Everybody's going to have their own opinion. And I think it was a great life lesson to learn in college that like, not everybody's going to like you. Everybody's going to think things about you. It's tr- it, Some things could be true. Some things could not, but like you dictate your own life and you get to dictate what you get upset about. Um, and that's a, that's a lesson that I learned in college from being in a sorority and sometimes having a negative perception. But then, you know, I got out in the real world and made my skin tougher. Well, let's get to this last question, because I think this is something that's going to help the listeners more so than anything else. Um, what is some advice you can give to the listeners about choosing the right fraternity or sorority for them? Yeah, uh, do your research, like go on their website, look at what they're interested in, look at what they're volunteering with. Um, does it look like they care about school? Cause listen, that's what you're there for at the end of the day. Um, and then go in there and interview, like interview them, uh, pay attention to what they're doing around you. It can be very hard. It can be very chaotic. Cause there's like a hundred people in one house at a given time and it's loud and crazy, but it's, you know, make sure you're asking the important questions that matter to you and make sure that this person you know, is engaged, does care about you, like, you know, is giving you real answers, like that kind of thing. So just really do your research and make sure that, you know, they are something that you don't mind representing too. One of the things you said in uh, an earlier question about your experience, 
I think is also a good advice. I actually wrote it down so I wouldn't forget it, but it seemed like when you were going into the process of joining your sorority, so going in through Rush, uh, Mm -hmm. it seemed like you were going in with the right reason. Like you wanted to get something out of it that was going to help you beyond just the partying. It was whether, whether it was philanthropic or volunteering work or school or, or the future networking possibilities you knew right away that this is what you wanted to get out of the sorority. Mm -hmm. And so I think another advice to listeners is, is really go in there with the right reasons, decide to go in there for the right reasons, not for the party reasons, Mm -hmm. not don't go in there just because I'm just going to go have fun and have parties because it's going to, it's going to end up being, it's going to end up backfiring. Yeah, I agree. I agree completely. Emily, would you say um, just one other question on that same vein? So there were all these opportunities, there were to do things, there were benefits that came along with it, there were some negatives. So when I came into college, I was, I came into the honors program or the honors college and it was very structured, right? And, you know, there was a select group of people, I guess you could say it was a little bit like a fraternity or sorority, but it was very structured along and along and you had to do certain things, particularly you had to take certain classes and things like that. Ultimately, it got in the way for me as to what classes I wanted to take. I didn't have the flexibility and the option. And as we talked about in prior episode, the value of studying abroad, it would have gotten in the way of that in a particular semester that I wanted to go. So as many benefits as it brought to the table, just those, that one, really one detriment alone was enough for me to drop out of it. So was there anything that you've ever felt like being in a sorority kept you from taking advantage of something or held something back from you? And what happens if you do drop out? And, you know, what's the pathway for that? Yeah. So, no, I wouldn't say anything really got in the way and like held anybody up from that. I know my senior year, I uh, auditioned to be in the musical Chicago in my theater department, which I had like never done. And I had no idea what the time commitment was. The time commitment was insane. Okay. So, um, but like the sorority was like, that's awesome. We can't wait to go watch you. Like, it's okay if you have to miss chapter a few times, you know? So they were like, you do you like, that's it. Like, as long as you're transparent and you communicate, like, and you're responsible and you, you know, do the minimum requirements, like go volunteer and get good grades. Like you're good, you know? But, you also did other extracurricular stuff as well. Yeah, a lot. Yeah, you were you were also on the dance team. I did a lot of things. Yeah. I mean, because I, I remember us talking about this kind of stuff, and I'm thinking, when do you have time to sleep? Never. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I don't know. I just I was really good at time management, but I honestly like learned that time management through college. But yeah, I was on the dance team too, the Sassy Cats. <laughs> did Emily? Did any of your members drop out? And if they did, like, oh, yeah. how did that affect things? Like, did um, it burn bridges? Did it hurt feelings? Uh, no, not really. Because usually people dropped out because they were either transferring and there wasn't another KD chapter at the school that they were going to, or they were dropping out because it was a large time commitment. And, you know, that girl was, you know, working to put herself through college and, you know, wasn't able to meet the minimum requirements that, you know, because she was busting her tail to do school and work. And I mean, when it comes down to why, I mean, why we go to college is to get an education. We can't be mad at people for wanting to take care of what they need to take care of. So I wouldn't say it burned bridges. I am still friends with girls that dropped out of the sorority when I was in school. Like we're still friends. So um, it's a very, it's not a quick path because the sorority is going to be like, you know, is there another option that we could take to keep you? Cause obviously like we love having you. We want you to be able to have like this alumni status, you know, after you leave. So we'll find different um, loopholes to try to help out in any kind of way that we ha- ha- can, whether that's like financially or um, maybe we change their requirements or, you know, just anything like that. But sometimes I, it's not, it doesn't work out and they, girl goes, nah, I got to leave. And so um, once you drop out, you just can't claim affiliation with us. That's about it. So my last question is, again, dealing back, going back with the financial side of it. Mm -hmm. Do you feel in your experience, the financial implications that you had, do you think the return was well worth it? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I'd do it again. Chase, do you have any other questions? No, I think I'm ready to go join a sorority. Hey, there you go. (laughs) I can write you a rec letter. So. (laughs) 
Oh yeah, and that's another big thing is rec letters yes, too, right? Absolutely. So you don't have to have that for fraternities, or at least the ones I'm, I'm used to. Well, that's an awesome show. I appreciate you coming, Emily. Yeah, thanks and for helping me. out with and thank the you, stuff Emily. that we're not very experienced in. Uh, on the next episode, we are going to be talking about graduate school. This is something that Jason and I do have some experience in. Um, but again, thank you, Emily. We enjoyed it. Maybe we can get you on another time because you seem to be very knowledgeable on extracurriculars. I love it. And yeah. But uh, until next time, Jason, you got anything to say? Just remind everybody we're here for you. So drop us a line on our website so we know what you want to hear about. Any successes you have, we'll celebrate them with you. Awesome. Well, until next time, we'll hope to see you then. Goodbye. Take care. Thanks for listening to the Reschooled Podcast. Be sure to head over to reschooled.com for news and other information on things we're getting into.